395 watt bifacial versus a 395 watt monofacial panel. Now both of these solar panels are almost exactly identical so this will be a really cool test and to see which one might be better for you. We're going to do two tests that way we can see which one puts out more watt hours in a certain amount of time and then see which one might be a better buy for you and your project. Okay, so first test panels up against this wall. This is going to give the bifacial definite advantage, one because there is some space behind it, and not to mention the white wall is going to give a little bit of light. It's going to help bounce some light onto the back part of the bifacial panel, so we should definitely get an advantage when it comes to this one. So we're going to hook these up, and the game is to get the most amount of watt hours in a certain amount of time, so we'll get started. Okay, each solar panel has the exact same setup with the exact same wiring. A 100 amp hour battery from Renogy and then a Victron solar charge controller, which this is what will keep track of the watt hours. So we'll get these hooked up. Okay, and they are off. So we'll take a look in about a minute or two, let them collect a little data, and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, now just to give you a little bit of the information, Victron number one is going to be the bifacial with Renogy number one battery and Victron number one charge controller. And Victron two will be the non-bifacial panel. So we're going to keep track of our watt hours over here and we're going to let these run for about four hours roughly and we'll see what happens. And a quick look at the conditions. We do have a little bit of haze up in the sky, some jet streams as well, but they're playing under the same conditions. So we'll see just which one does better after a few hours. Okay, now these have been running just for a little bit, about 20 minutes, and I'll throw up some information here on the screen. Now you can see that Victron number one, we're getting about the same 313 watts as Victron 2 down at the bottom there, 314, slightly higher amps at Victron 2. And look at our watt hours, both at about 100 watt hours. So doing a very close job with both of these panels. And the specs and the output of everything on these is so close, which is why it's kind of a cool comparison just to kind of see the differences because you do have the white reflective wall giving a little bit of advantage to the bifacial. And bifacial panels are supposed to be mounted about normally a meter above your mounting surface. So if you are looking at bifacials, you'll have to really think about where you're gonna be using these. But here's some more information that you can also check out while we get to the next test. Now if you take a look at the cells on the bifacial, there are five bus bars that go across each cell. Now if you look at the monopanel, there are actually nine bus bars that go across each cell, and each solar panel has a different amount of cells per panel. The bifacial panel has six cells that run across the top, and 12 cells that run on the side until it gets to the halfway mark. This is basically like two solar panels in one. You have a top half and a bottom half, that way they act independently of each other for shading. The same with the mono panel, they both act independently of each other. They're basically just in parallel, that way if one again gets shaded, the other half is still working unlike some of the other solar panels from yesterday they would get shaded in about a third and you would only be producing maybe five percent of its output now the bifacial solar panel has 144 total cells that make up the top and bottom half while the mono panel only has 132 cells. Now I did measure both of these panels as the square area is very close. The bifacial runs 21.25 square feet while the non-bifacial is 21.23 square feet. So these are very close as far as being like a competitive panel if you were to measure two different types of panels, but there is one big advantage of the bifacial panel is that being bifacial, you have this whole other section that can absorb light. So even if you had this facing the wrong way, this can still absorb a decent amount of light and put out a decent amount of power, which I'll show you later. We'll do a test just to show you how much light comes from the backside of this. Okay, and just to show you a quick test of what happens when you test a bifacial panel against a non-bifacial, um, just for the people who kind of don't know, for the beginners out there. Okay, so there's not really any obstructions except for the wires, but we're gonna take a look at this little meter right here. And if you take a look, our open circuit voltage is 43 volts at the moment. And so now I'm gonna run this little test meter, and this is gonna show us what our watts are just on the back side. This will take about three, four seconds. And then after it runs a test, you can see right now 76 watts. Now it is um, a little bit overcast at the moment, but now you can see 102 watts. So 
that's just the back side of the panel only. Now if we test the non-bifacial over there, now you can see we are getting some bolts but when it comes to putting a load on the panel, that's pretty much when you're going to see like hardly any output. Look at that, one watt. So obviously big difference when it comes to the bifacial. Okay, so just over three and a half hours on this test. If you look at the data here, we're showing 930 versus 920 watts. This was way closer than I thought it was going to be. I thought the bifacial would have taken the lead a little bit more, especially just from other testing that I've done as well. Today, the conditions were equal for both of them. I have them set up against the wall exactly at the same angle, and they've both been out here at the same amount of time. And if you take a look at the batteries as well, you can see the percentage is almost exactly identical. Now these were both at zero when I started. So they kicked on, they started charging. So this is really too close to call for both of these. Now the bifacial, if you give this another day or two, it might still stretch its lead, which it probably would by just a smidge. So depending on how you are going to mount these might determine on how or which type of panel you really want to buy. I'm going to show you one more test now. We're going to do the same thing about a three and a half to four hour duration test to show you the difference in what happens with these panels now. Okay, test number two is going to be both of the panels now laying on the ground, kind of like if they were on a roof. So there's not really going to be anything that's going to help the bifacial that much. And we'll see what the differences are. Now again, Victron 1 and Renogy 1 are going to be on the bifacial. And if you look at the data right now, along with Victron 2 and also Battery 2, you can see Victron 1 and Victron 2 are both showing 10 watt hours. But if you look how much more power we're getting out of Victron 2, which is the non-bifacial, we're actually getting more watts and more current. And if we also look at our battery differences, look at the amperage coming into number one, Renogy battery number one, and Renogy battery number two. Now again, number two is gonna be the non-bifacial. So, now if you're looking to buy bifacial panels, you may want to consider where you're going to be mounting them to get the best performance because if you're just going to throw them on the ground or maybe on a rooftop with a black composite roof, you may not get as good a performance as you would with just a traditional mono panel. So depending on pricing though, you're getting really good deals right now on the bifacials, but before the tariffs come, you may want to take advantage of buying these and you can buy both of these. I'll leave links down below where you can find these and source them for cheap prices right now. But we'll come back in just a little bit and look at the data. Okay, back out at the solar panels. We're just about four hours into the test and I'm actually at peak solar irradiance, meaning that the sun is directly overhead on the panels. If you notice the shade, there's a little sliver right there. And if you come back over this way, there's a little sliver over there. So the sun is equally over both of these panels right now. And they're both incredibly equal as far as their output. It's actually pretty amazing because they're both putting out 330 to 332. And as far as our kilowatt hours getting 990, there's a 970 there as it's separated just a little bit. But it will eventually catch up as it hits about 980. Now this gap will continue, obviously, if you were to do this in a longer duration test. But this gives you a little bit of information on what might be a better panel for you. Now again, these Canadian solar panels, these are panels that you can actually buy from a distributor online. Along with the Hyundai panels, you can also pick up these bifacials. And again, before the tariffs come, this might be something you may want to think about if you were looking to build your solar array or off-grid type situation. Um, prices are probably going to be going up substantially. Now, if you guys have any questions, there is a link down below called Ask Me. And I hope this video helped you out. I hope to see you guys in the next video.